Hey everybody and welcome to the channel. My name is Stefan and today and I'm Katie and there's Katie. <laughs> hey everyone, how you doing? So today's uh, podcast episode is titled Blessed Are the Flexible. That's right. RV living. Mm. Mm. Because we all know how important it is to be flexible when you live in an RV. Right, right. Oops, music's still there. <laughs> <laughs> We're just kind of adjusting for a minute. Yep. Just for a moment. So if you're new to the podcast... Um, welcome. Welcome. My name is Stefan, and my significant other over here is Katie. Hey, hey. And together, we are Trello, Trello Shop. Shop. Um, before we get started, you know, you can hit us up on our socials. Um, Trello Shop, T-R-E-L-L-A-S-H-O-P-P-E. Mm -hmm. uh, you can find us on Twitter, Instagram... Um, and definitely YouTube. Um, and now on a podcast. And now on a podcast. How exciting is that? Super exciting. Yeah, that's... Uh, can we give some snaps for ourselves for a second? This has been a huge goal for a while. Um, I don't remember how long ago it was. Originally, you said, hey, let's start a podcast. Let's. We have lots of life experiences now. We have lots to say. Uh, let's start a creative, creative outlet of a podcast. Right? And we did it. And we did it. Well, it's different from a YouTube video because, um, yeah, just uh, the way it works, it's different. The way you sit down and just share your heart and talk. Like, YouTubes, you share a lot, too, but it's kind of an in-the-moment adventure, whereas the podcast, we're, we're really wanting to make sure we sit down and, like, come up with ideas, brainstorm together, and share our mind and our hearts with y'all. You know, it's different, and it's exciting. <laughs> Yeah, lot, lots of little heart hands going around right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And even Miss Kitty woke up for the occasion. Yep, even Miss Kitty's awake. Yeah, she's a Roman. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, without further ado, without further ado, want to dive on in? Let's dive on in. So, what uh, flexibility? Yes. And RV living. Uh huh. Oh my. Right. There's lots of words that could be used for flexibility, adaptability, uh, easygoingness, um, open-mindedness. Uh, you fill in the blank, right? There's lots of ideas behind flexibility, but regardless of what you call it, you have to have it. It's really essential and important to RV living, adventuring, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. like when we got into RV living, you know, in our mind... It was like, okay, great, you know, we'll go take it somewhere and we'll find a place to stay. And it'll be easy. <laughs> it'll be easy. And that's just the one thing that we encountered. RV living is easy. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously we're from Florida. Uh -huh. Obviously, well, they might not know. They're new podcast people. Oh, yes. We're from Florida. We're from Florida. You and, might not know that. And so apparently, I don't know why, but Florida is... Hot spot. Is a hot spot. And so when we started full-time RV living and mm. traveling, um, very quickly we learned that if you're in Florida in the winter months, mm -hmm. um, you better have it planned out where you're staying. Right. Um, it's not just like, oh, okay, you know, I want to go here and I'm going to call and I should expect to, to be able to stay for however long. It's mm. not like that in nope. Florida. We, De I not. think because we started off our RV journey and we were staying on family property. And so when we were ready to like branch out into our own, we started doing our research and like figuring out, okay, where you want to stay and how long, what's our plans? We're going to adventure, blah, blah, blah. And we got like the door shut in our face real quick. Um, be it everything was already booked up uh, because we were going into the winter holidays. Our RV was too old. Yeah. So, so that I think that's one thing uh -huh. I want to highlight too, is that <laughs> we did not know that in the RV community, the majority of, establishments a majority of rv parks have these rules so if you're considering buying an rv um at least in florida anyway at least in florida it's good to know these rules and and this is all part yeah. of about being flexible but we were asked how old we were mm -hmm. we were asked if we had any children we were asked if we had any pets then we were asked what's the make model and year of our rig 
And then we had to uh, send an email proof of what our rig looked like. So if apparently there is a 10 year limit on the majority of RV parks in Florida. So if your rig is older than 10 years from the current year, um, you have to send in a picture. And mm-hmm. when we first started, we had a 2004 Coachman Aurora. Right. So some people right off the bat were like, no, your your rig's too old. You can't stay here. Yeah, they wouldn't even talk to us. And then other people were like, okay, well, what kind of shape is it in? Uh, you need to send an email with pictures. Uh-huh. So we're like, holy cow. Like, But we were flexible and adaptable. And instead of letting it ruin our plans and what we were up to, we kept our cool. Right. Mm -hmm. We stuck together. We made a plan to like we created an email format for ourselves, like basically a ready letter to anywhere we wanted to stay. And it had cute pictures of of us and Miss Kitty and standing in front of our RV with our like, hey, we just bought an RV picture and um, showing off all the pictures of what it looked like. And it included like whatever maintenance we had done on it or, you know, like our rig is good to go. Like we've had it checked out. We're so happy. Like we we created that together that way we could kind of assume that control of the situation right like we were flexible we were open to these are the rules right we now, have mind to live you, with them mind you when i found this out i was like i had no idea so i really hope that what we're sharing with you helps you. it helps you and if you're in the mm-hmm. rving community or you know someone that's interested in the rv community you let them know this stuff because it's not like we're making this up this is a legitimate thing and I'm not quite sure if it's just specific to Florida. No, I think it's probably other places. Um, and I asked that are uh, hot spots, but yeah. And I asked one one person. I was like, "Why is it that they have a ten year limit?" And they're like, "Oh, well, you know, it's it's because of the electrical on your rig, you and know, the liabilities of having an older, broken down vehicle." So it pretty much property. comes down to the liability, mm-hmm. um, which makes sense. That's fine. Mm-hmm. But but as new RVers, it was like a really stressful thing to wrap our minds around. Like, oh, do you whiz? Maybe we bit off more than we can chew. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. But you, you can't do that. Mm-hmm. Anything, when something comes up, RV. Y- you remember like, that one lady when we walked up to the window? Yes, I she do. She was just straight up blunt. Right, she was right. just like, no. Right. But so anytime something comes up, when like it's discouraging or stressful, you have to like stay calm and figure it out together. Because otherwise, what are you doing in an RV? That's how the lifestyle goes. Yeah. And, and Katie, like Katie said, you know, we came up with um, a, uh, you know, an email, a formatted email with mm-hmm. pictures and text that pretty much was everything that, you know, anybody would want to see whether or not we fit their right. criteria. So right and off the bat, we would send that in. Yeah. So right off the bat, we would send it in. And once we had that and we talked to them on the phone. We were good. Nine times out of 10, 10 out of 10, they, w- they would let us come stay wherever yeah. they were. Absolutely. Yeah. I can't read your handwriting. Oh. <laughs> so what obviously are... being flexible presents more options and more opportunities yes. and, and open-mindedness. Yes. Open-mindedness. Right. So we went to dinner the other night and um, to a local fish camp. We were pleasantly surprised, right? It was like... Fish camp restaurant. Yeah, it was good. And um, we got to talking about this topic and... We were really passionate in the moment, right? Talking about how being flexible offers, um, what does it say? More options, more opportunities, <laughs> yes, and more options and opportunities. There we go. Uh, when you let, like, let's dive into that. Mm-hmm. When you have an open mind, you have more available to you. Just it's an automatic thing. When you have an open mind, you are not shut out to all sorts of options. And if you really want something, like I I really wanted this. Like we put our time, money, and effort and invested into a 2004 Class A. And right out the gate, it was almost like you're being put through the rigmarole. And we were like all rainbows and butterflies. And so That's like, adventure. I, I'm going to be honest. I was like super discouraged and frustrated. And I'm like, holy sh- shiza. Yeah. Did, did we make a smart choice, a smart purchase? Because now like. Are, are we forever like Stuck limited this. Mm-hmm. on this rigmarole of where we can stay and what we can do? And so if you really want something, you know, staying positive and open-minded. 
and being committed to it. Yeah, b- because because I, I, I could see like if we didn't stay positive or open minded or try to figure out our options, having some sort like a barrier or a challenge like that, I could see how we wouldn't be here right now making a podcast or a YouTube video. Right. We would have had to have given up a long time ago. Yeah, a long, long time ago. We probably like if we had kept on that mindset of like, there's nothing available for us. Everywhere is booked. We're our rig is too old. We wouldn't have been able to stay anywhere. We wouldn't have been able to plan anything or experience anything that we've done the past like five months or so, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. more than that, seven months. Yep. Um, And it, it just would have been, you know, out of the frying pan into the fryer, more, you know, desperate situations. And, and we, we don't, obviously most people don't want that for themselves. They don't want to be in a negative, awful situation. Like you want better. So the thing is you have to like train your mind to, to be better, think better and have that. It's not just going to happen naturally. You have to be like, and, and I would, and it, like, I have a master's degree in psychology. Um, and, and so it is human nature when we are faced with challenges to just wrote automatically slide into the appropriate human emotion of, you know, this sucks. Pessimism. Pessimism. You know, nothing's ever going to get better. Why me? Like, it's very easy and familiar to just slide into that. It's comfortable. And mm-hmm. and making a con- and, it, and it's not this cliche thing that's like, "Oh, well, just be positive." Like it is hard work. A conscious, mm-hmm. effortful yes. skill that you have to practice and every day. Me when I was, you know, doing therapy with people, it it, re- it really is something that you have to reintegrate into your thought process. And when something presents itself that's like this sucks, like to really slow down and not let the emotional reaction take over the rational solution focused reaction. And so it is a conscious effort. And also too, those uh, from the psychological research that um, practice this skill of gratitude and positivity. If you look at MRI scans of the brain, um, if you do it on a long-term basis, you can literally rewire your brain and there is there is proof in this and this is valid scientific evidence that there is proof in this that if you look at someone who's negative and pessimistic versus someone's brain who is positive and optimistic optimistic um there are significant internal neurological changes there's there was also a study of people who were injured and in a hospital and they looked at people who were positive and optimistic Versus those that weren't. And the people that were positive and optimistic had faster healing and faster recovery times and less time That's in the amazing. hospital. So there, there is valid research out to kind of prove what we're talking about. So it's not this cliche thing of like, oh, just be flexible in RV life and it'll all work out. No, I mean, it. there are some major challenges that, that make you cry, make you angry. And it's just kind of like hitting the brakes and saying, okay... This is what it is, but what is my power? What is my ability? And I think like a a way, like an example of thinking of that would be, um, you know, not, it's not thinking like, oh, like it's, it's not going to rain today. Like I'm fine. You know, everything's sunshine. It's, it's bringing an umbrella with you in case it happens, you know, just Having that like, you know what, it might rain, it might not, but I got an umbrella and I'm prepared and whatever comes my way, I'm good. Right. Like Mm -hmm. it's kind of that self-determining attitude that like, yeah, we're going to get through it. And and I'll give an example. Um, So on our way to become camp hosts at Adventure Pisgah in Brevard, (laughs) North Carolina, we had just crossed the Florida Georgia line and about 20, 30 minutes past the Florida Georgia line, mm. I looked into my right mirror to check on our fifth wheel. And out of the very top right corner, I could kind of see something wiggling in the mirror. And so while I was driving, I checked the road real quick. And then I kind of hunched down and, and leaned to look. And our freaking awning. Oh, my god! Our awning yes. while I'm driving like it happened. 60 miles an hour. Full out. Had started to 
unravel and pop out. And so what happened is that one of the all, pretty much all three of the rivets on one side had gone away, and luckily a rubber small rubber hose got tangled in it, so it prevented it from completely opening up while we were driving. So it was sitting there, you know, one fourth of the way open. So Katie and I are like, okay, emergency, emergency, we need to stop moving. I pull over onto the side of the road and I get up on our extension ladder and I'm like, okay, well, maybe I can fix this. Maybe I can fix this. And when I undid the little rubber hose from the awning cover, the whole entire awning like shot straight out all like eight feet that it can retract straight out the whole entire awning, the length of it and everything. And then when it shot like eight feet out, I didn't have an A-frame ladder. I only had a ladder that you can put up against something. And so my ability to fix it went away. Mm-hmm. And we're on, we're not in the grass. We're on the the, 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 shoulder. the shoulder of the highway in the slow, next to the slow lane on the right-hand side. And semi-trucks are just barreling by us. And like every it was time- It pretty I, scary. Yeah. And every time a semi would pass by, it would- you know, it would kind of, the air, the pressure would kind of push us or it would rock the truck or the rig. Uh-huh. And so in that moment of despair and confusion and anger and frustration, I'm on the ladder. And, and when I was there and I was like, okay, I can fix this. And once I undid the rubber and it shot out, it didn't shoot out quick, but it shot out with enough pressure that yeah. I couldn't stop it. And so I lost it. And I started like, I, I, I was overcome with like I think fear. Salute. I, I was overcome with fear and and in the moment I did not have any solution. I had a solution, but that was gone in that moment. And so what did I do? I think you punched something. So <laughs> in in my <laughs> I'm pretty sure you got some bloody knuckles. Yeah, so I started I'm on the ladder, semis are flying by, I'm pissed off. Nobody's considering that like we're human beings and we can be turned into like you know, mush, mush. So I'm losing it. And I start pounding the side of the RV with one of my hands. And when he says pounding, like he did it twice. It wasn't like a rampant, like jub, jub, yeah. jub, jub, jub. it wasn't. And so yeah, I was like really that. upset. And like, I even started to get a little tearful because I was just so angry. And luckily this little angel I'm over an here, angel. what did you say to me? Calm the frick down. I don't actually remember what she I did, said. That was one of the things she said. Yeah, I really don't remember what I said. But I do remember being the voice of reason and saying, hey, this is what we have roadside assistance for. We have to stay calm. We have to remain in control of the situation. We're all right. I, I mean, I remember spitting out all sorts of words, but I don't remember what exactly I said. Do you remember? Pretty much what we're telling everybody right now. Be flexible, man. Be flexible. Like this situation happened and it did, it, it's no good to get so fired up. All that happened was he added a little dent to the side of the RV. Don't uh, you, didn't you some, take a picture of that? A picture two of that? Um, I think so. Uh, are we able to like. No, no, no. I'm saying, well, I mean, this is obviously a podcast, but on our YouTube channel, when yeah, I make this into we can a video, show, I have a couple of, we only images. have two, we only have two pictures because in the moment we were like, okay, yeah. this is dangerous. Right. Not filming. Right. Um, yeah, filming was the last of our thoughts at that moment. Um, but I'm pretty good. That's a, because it's a skill I've acquired and I've practiced for so long. And that when something like this happens, you cannot freak out because it becomes even more dangerous. Uh, he could have gotten like seriously hurt and broken his hand, or he could have damaged our rig even further. That what could would that have caused? Or us? now that I think about it, I could have been swinging too much and just falling off the ladder when I was like eight eight feet up. Yeah, and And then what would have happened? Like, we would have been totally SOL. Mm -hmm. And so, um, we, like, we hugged, we held each other, like, we're gonna get through this. Let me go call roadside assistance. And we, I mean, it got worked out. Eventually, we, a a good Samaritan came and helped us. He was a fellow RVer. Yeah, so, so, listen to this. We, it doesn't matter. Well, no, no, I'm saying she, Katie, calm me down. yeah, yeah. And I finally was able to calm down. I was still really upset, I was scared. She was too, but she was like doing a good job of trying to like keep it under control. And the second we I go calmed into down, like teacher mode, mom mode, you know. Yeah. The second she calmed down mode. and we talked it out, we're like, okay, well, let's let's call roadside service. Let's call our insurance company or whatever, 
or triple A or whatever we had, whatever we have. And so we, she gets on the phone. I'm sitting there and we're looking at it. And just like, you know, it is what it is. Semis keep coming by, you know, for the most part, we're somewhat safe. And so all of a sudden this, this like truck, little red, you know, tiny pickup truck, you know, two doors with a half door, tiny pickup truck pulls up and this guy gets out and he's like, oh, hey, what's going on? (laughs) And I'm like, man. And uh, he was like, all right, we're going to fix you up. Like, that's the first thing he said to me. He's like, you're going to be all right. We're going to fix you up. Got on a ball cap and some cowboy boots and mm-hmm. yep. And so what he did is he he backed his truck up up and under right the, next to our RV. Yeah, and up and under where the the awning awning mm-hmm. motor was and the um the awning too because it was kind of hanging down. And so him and I stood up on top of the the roof of his truck, not the not the um not the bed, but not, the roof not the bed the or the hood, but we stood up on the roof of the truck. And he had um, like quarter inch um, self tapping screws, and we put the awning two back into the motor, and we put in three three or four quarter inch self tapping screws. He's like, "All right, go back inside and see." And when I hit the button, the awning rolled up completely quiet, as if nothing happened, and it tightened itself back up, and it Beautiful. literally looked like right. none of the <laughs> drama or chaos yeah. occurred. So. He was a guardian angel, I tell you what. Yeah, so being a good Samaritan and helping people out on the side of the road, yeah, it's a little weird. You know, first he walked up, and I was like, who is this guy? I was like, um, do you think this is the roadside assistance guy? I was like, Katie, no, this isn't roadside <laughs> assistance. I was trying to be optimistic there. Uh-huh, like, uh, uh-huh. is this our help? Yeah. Uh, but we got ourselves out of it, you know? Mm-hmm. We stayed cool. I stayed cool. But I helped you to find your cool. Yeah. yeah. And then the she thing really is, did. we, and in that moment, maybe you weren't exactly flexible in that moment, but you adapted to the situation and you were able to overcome the situation because you were like, okay, getting through it. One way or another, you had to get through it, right? Yeah. I mean, so whether I was happy or I was upset. like We couldn't take up camp there on the side of the road forever. So we had to figure out a way to, to make it work. Mm-hmm. And that's what we did. Yeah. I hoof. So, uh, you know, allowing yourself to have that emotional reaction. Absolutely. Cool. Have your emotional reaction, but then try to reel it back in and say, yes, yes. Okay, solution focused. Like, is a, is a therapeutic technique and a practice that, you know, we talk to our patients and that we learn in school is that, okay, so we know our issues. Our issues are really big. They're upsetting. And we can spend all kinds of time being upset, angry. And woe is me and victimizing ourselves. And that stuff all matters. But let's try to get out of that. And let's switch our energy to what focusing you gonna do about on it? Mm-hmm. the solutions, the rational, and the positive, and the gratitude. Because what's going to get you through it? Just being negative? And, and that's just, you know, I, that, that guy could have pulled up in his little truck and I could have been like, screw you, you weirdo. You know, you screw you. Just, we don't want your help. We don't want your help. And um, so it it is a conscious, effortful thing that you have to do. And being in the RV community and living the RV life, um, that's just, you know, how it goes. Yeah, things are constantly needing attention that you're not expecting to have to attend to. Um, the way traveling works, you just have to be flexible. Like mm-hmm. when, uh, where were we? What were we doing? Like we're going somewhere. And it's like, oh, hey, there's this cool thing on the side of the road. Let's take a pause in our itinerary and like stop and enjoy this moment. And so the RV living, the RV lifestyle is so much more fulfilled because we're able to be flexible and alter our our life, mm-hmm. our, you know, plans to, en- to enjoy it even more. Yeah. Like that's kind of, you know. Yeah. And, and it doesn't always have to. It's not always negative in no, the RV no. community. That's what I'm life. saying. Like that's a positive thing. But what I'm saying, when you're home is on wheels and your home moves around just like a boat being on water that vibration and friction over time Things stuff happen. stuff stuff is going to happen whether you expect it or not and so having that mindset that my home is in motion and moving often it needs more TLC it, it's it going needs... things are going to pop up mm-hmm. and that's just get ready for it because that is going to be a way of life where it's like okay you know what do we what do we need to fix today or what do I need to look at or what do I need to work on and and 
it's going to be what it's going to be. And yeah. it's not always about rushing to get somewhere. You know, it's it's being flexible. Like, um, yeah, like we were driving and we wanted to see something real quick and we had to be somewhere, like check in. It was like, hey, you know, we can take our time. We can pull off. We can enjoy it. Yeah. We can be flexible. So it's not just being flexible in negative situations or difficult situations. Also being flexible in like the positive stuff. Right, too. Because that's what allows those extra opportunities. You know, um, that's what allows that more ample living when you have that open mindset towards I'm ready to receive whatever good is coming my way today. And, you know, someone I'm, I'm a planner. I'm a stick with the budget, stick with the timeline, stick with the plan kind of person. And so that's something that I've had to learn and kind of really embrace for myself with this lifestyle is, you know what, I I don't know the good that's going to come from this. So I'm just going to open up my arms to it and just say, come and, my and, way. And I like that instead of, you know, as human beings, we're thinking beings from like a cognitive behavioral therapy perspective. But we're always thinking whether we realize it or not. You know, the second we open our eyes in bed, we're, we're thinking whether we, we're conscious of it or not. And so I, I like that waking up first thing in the morning or waking up with the mindset of like, I'm ready for whatever positivity might yeah. present itself today. Like yeah. I'm ready to receive the day and receive the positivity that's in the day mm -hmm. and not necessarily be looking forward to or expecting Right. The negative. Because it's so easy to, to wake up and say, oh, I wonder what's coming my way today. Instead, yeah. I'm going to go, oh, I wonder what's coming my way today. Yes. Right? Oh, my God. Yes. Katie. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, life's like too short to be so such a ball of like anxious fury. Mm -hmm. I'd rather be flexible. Um I actually learned this phrase, blessed are the flexible, when I was 16 years old. And it's um, a phrase that has stuck with me all those years. I'm 36 now. So I've been using this phrase for 20 years. And um, some backstory on this phrase was I was going on like a mission trip as a teenager to go and help a underprivileged school in Honduras. Anyway... Uh, one of the leaders, uh, one of my friend's dads, uh, he said to us as a pep talk before we left, you know, whatever happens on this trip, just remember blessed are the flexible. And um, when we have an open mind and an open heart towards stuff, good can come. And he, um, he elaborated a whole lot more than that. But for some reason, uh, that phrase just stuck with me all these 20 years. And so anytime something comes up, I just remind myself, blessed are the flexible. There's going to be something good that comes from this if I can keep an open mind. If I don't rush towards judgment, anger, impatience, um, any of those negative, selfish thoughts and feelings, if I stay positive and open and welcoming to the, all, to the good, then life is going to be so much better. And um, so blessed are the flexible. It sounds super hokey. But I feel like it's been a cornerstone of my life. Well, again, I can back it up. Yeah. You know, from a psychological perspective that it really is a conscious, rational skill that you need to begin practicing or, or not. You need to begin. It's just it's something that you have to be conscious of. And, and just by becoming conscious of it and recognizing that you need to work on it or that becoming conscious and working on it, you're already like rewiring things and changing yeah, things like you're already at a higher vibration you're already moving into um a new beginning for yourself yeah and isn't that really cool to think about that like just one simple thought can start a new beginning for yourself mm -hmm. you don't have to be stuck in the mud all your life nope i mean everyone has a moment no one's perfect we're all human but we have that power we don't have to stay in it i just think that's so cool and so any anyway the whole point of this podcast today is we've realized um, how absolutely necessary that phrase is to this lifestyle to be an adventurer, any sort of explorer, traveler, RV person, sailboat person, any of those things, you have to be flexible. It's just as, you know, a standard way of thought for this lifestyle. It has to be. Mm -hmm. We don't make the rules. It just has to be. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 
And, um, so, and, and you know, I, I, I really think that, you know, I think we covered it. <laughs> yeah, I think, um, you know, we we really wanted to talk about this. We've talked about for a long time talking about flexibility. And so it, it's meant a lot for us to come and sit down and actually share about it. And whether you gain something or not from this podcast, um, I think the point we want to get across to people is just, okay, I think you know that being flexible is important, being adaptive and um, is important. But we want to share our own heart and experience of the situation and just kind of share that it's important to us because this is such a big thing for us and it's what gets us going. Yeah, and it's, and, not, it's not like, oh, you know, we make YouTube videos and we travel full time in our RV and, and Katie sells butterflies on the side. Uh -huh. It's like, no, we, we have our own challenges and ish that, that present itself that, you know. It's the, challenging. It's difficult. The, it's hard. Yeah. There's their other world behind the lens of YouTube right, and but, social but, media that we're like, life is happening. And, you know, we, yeah. we do have our challenges that present themselves. So, like, I think we just really want to share that, like, hey, we've had to work on this and we have to live this every day. Yeah. And so mostly just to talk about it with yeah. you and open up that lens of transparency yeah. with you and, guys and give everybody that's interested in the rv community like a heads up that you know like i said your home is on wheels you're moving yeah and things are going to vibrate and shake and stuff's going to happen and you know oh your refrigerator is 20 years old and it just stops working and you know you yeah. got you got to figure it out you got to figure it out and so you're not alone either like there's a beautiful community that really binds together when stuff happens like if you you can find your rv community mm -hmm. or whatever lifestyle you're in you, you know there's a community behind that yeah and, and i would you. say that maybe leads to like after this is like okay i'm having my emotional reaction uh -huh. um this is really scary or frustrating i might not admit it i might not even know that i'm feeling those feelings but it's okay to like find someone in your surrounding and say hey you know what I need a little help right now or I'm I'm really upset or I'm sad or I'm scared or I'm anxious. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, get, you know, can you help me? Yeah. And, it's, you know, it, there's good human beings out there. Absolutely. And, and, you know, like Katie's saying, there are, you know, RVing life is a community. And, and so far, us being out on the road and traveling the way we have, almost everywhere we've gone, I have encountered people that are like, yeah, man, like you need to do this or you need to fix this. And like they'll actually get down and dirty with me and help me fix stuff. Or like, for instance, um, you know, when we had received our fifth wheel and we took it back to the RV park where we were staying, it was literally like the hardest back in that you could ever do with a fifth wheel. And so it was, it was like literally a 90 degree late at night back in and it was late at night. And so everybody that was around our campsite, they all came out. You know, they had to they had to move their vehicles because it was like a really smaller RV park. It was so tight knit. And they were all like, okay, you need to turn it here, you turn it there. You know, they weren't like, oh, screw this. You know, it's late at night or, you know, you need to learn how to do it there. You need to go. No, it was, they were all supportive mm -hmm. and all helpful. And once I got it backed in, everybody was like, yay. And then everyone yeah. went back to like doing their own right. thing. He jokes all the time about how like everyone like got out the beer and the folding chairs and they all walk, came to watch. Like, right. it wasn't like that at all. Like, we joke about it because everyone came out. But it was all in support. And I think they all understood. Like, he had, you know, you had talked with a lot of our neighbors at the RV park before picking it up and saying, hey, like, I'm new to driving a fifth wheel. Like, what advice do you have for me? How do you think I should angle this out? And so you did a really good job of, like, doing your, like, research ahead of time and talking to your support ahead of time and so when it came time they showed up for you mm -hmm. for us and they were more than happy to like to support they gave advice turn this way you got this let me move my vehicle and then even afterwards um we had you know picked up this new fifth wheel without really had, go had having gone through much of anything and our neighbor gave us a tour of how to Guy's, na things? guy's name was, I believe, Jason. Jason from Alaska, and and uh, I even called him two twice. times, two times after we left the RV park because I had some issues, and even then the guy still answered my call, and he's like, "Yeah, man, no problem. Whatever you need, anytime." Nicest guy, and he was just hanging out and like, "Well, you know, you got to learn somehow. I have some knowledge. If you want to talk, like by all means, let's talk." Mm -hmm. And he went through, and it just—it's amazing how 
you find, you know, some some of your tribe and they will support you. Along your journey, you find yeah. your tribe. And it's having that open mindedness and that gratitude and and recognizing, hey, you know, I need some help and not letting the fear and and the 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 despair kind of isolate you and make you think that no yeah. one out there it's like it's almost like you forget that there's no one out there that can help you or that there are people out there that can help you mm-hmm. and it kind of makes you forget and it's like if you can slow yourself down and remind there, yourself there are, you are not alone there are opportunities in situations i mean and sometimes the opportunities to difficult or challenging solutions maybe aren't what you want or the best but it it'll get you through it Absolutely. or it'll help you to turn in a direction to get out of it and so yeah staying you know blessed are the flex- flexible blessed are the flexible yeah. absolutely mm-hmm. so um i think that comes to the end of our podcast i wanted yeah. to thank you guys if you've made it this far in the thank podcast you. or thank you, or you, the you, youtube you. video <laughs> uh we really appreciate it so much um you know to help support us and keep this going uh katie and i have created a patreon um so i'll uh you know if you go to patreon look up trella shop t-r-e-l-l-a-s-h-o-p-p-e and you'll find us you, you'll find us um you get early access to our podcast a discord server a couple other things and we're still working tweaking it some some merch. we want to make sure it's the most valuable some merch so um i'll put a link in the description of this youtube video um And, you know, if you're hearing this on the podcast, find us in our social medias, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, all that good stuff. All that good stuff. So thank you guys so very much. I really hope that this podcast is informational and it helps you to kind of have a better idea of RV life Mm -hmm. and and, and what kind of awaits you if you don't know. Yeah. And um, I think also, too, I think all of our listeners today, I think maybe you we'll get a little bit of insight about how we work as people, which I always like podcasts and YouTube videos like this. Cause I feel like I get to know people better. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. I'm excited for this next season. Just this real quick, real quick. I know we're tying things up, but I'm excited for this next season of like podcasting and videos because I feel like, you know, we've gotten enough tweaks worked out enough bugs worked out that we're able to like be more ourselves with you guys and share more of ourselves with everyone. Um, which is going to make everything just so much better. If we could be ourselves with you, then we got some magic, right? Like we want to invest in our community and create a tribe with you guys. Um, We like having support. We like having family. So I hope that uh, you guys can listen to this and feel like you're a part of this with us. Uh, We would love to have you as our RV life family, our travel you know, tribe, all of that stuff. We would love if you would join us on this journey. And and any... uh any comments in the YouTube video, uh, much appreciated and, 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 and glad to hear any sort of feedback or your guys' own thoughts on flexibility and living a life of gratitude and positivity. That would mm-hmm. be, I would be interesting to read in the comments. Yeah, I'd love to hear some of yeah. that stuff. So thank you so much. Yes. And we will see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys. Thank you. People, bye. <laughs>